Thank you. Good morning. morning. Welcome to our service for July 30th. A um, couple announcements. Uh, session met on Tuesday and discussed a number of items. Um, some of the things that are going to be happening this week. Um, we are going to be uh, beginning a Bible school uh, after the FBS dinner on Wednesdays. Now that the, um, uh, this uh, season of the uh, Chosen has been completed, and we hope you all join us. This Wednesday's FBS uh, menu will be vegetable casserole. Um, regarding the windows, uh, anybody who still wants a window, if they would um, uh, let us know. Other than that, we are now going to be turning the windows over for public sale and opening up uh, the, the uh, sale windows and making them available to the public. Uh, choir practice will be this afternoon at 2 o'clock. The women's group will be having a workshop at uh, 7 o'clock this coming Tuesday. We'd like to uh, remind everyone about the uh, school supply and book bag drive that uh, will be uh, concluding on the 13th of August. Uh, the um, uh, baskets out uh, front will be uh, where we can uh, place your donations. There is a list on the front table. Uh, as to what is needed. And finally, we'd like to extend uh, happy birthday wishes to Judy, whose birthday is tomorrow, and thank her for everything that she does for this church. Thank you. Indeed, welcome to our worship here at Shiloh Presbyterian Church. My name is Kevin Conley. I'm the interim pastor here. We're glad you're with us. If you're a member here at, at Shiloh, we uh, treasure and value your participation in our ministry. Uh, if you are a visitor here, uh, we hope that you will participate in some sense in our ministry, uh, even beyond uh, attending our worship this morning. Um, and should you wish to do so, and should you wish to uh, explore uh, becoming a member here at Shiloh, I'll be glad to talk to you about that, as would uh, one of our elders uh, who are here uh, this morning. If we have someone who's currently serving on session, if you could just raise your hands or stand up and take a look around, you can see who those folks are, and we would be glad to, to talk with you about that. Let us begin now our worship this morning of the living God. And let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Would you join us, uh, please, in our call to worship. Waiting is never easy for us. We are a culture of instant response. Today, God is asking us to wait, 
to be patient. It is not going to be easy for us to do that. Quiet your spirits and open your hearts to God's word for you today. Lord, be with us. Help us to be ready to hear and respond to your word. Amen. We sing together our first song, Every Time I Feel the Spirit Moving in My Heart, I Will Pray. We have heard the last several weeks from the book of Genesis. Uh, the family of Abraham has experienced it, his, some ups and some downs uh, throughout the stories in Genesis. Now that Abraham's grandson Jacob has gone and to serve Laban, his kinsman, and now Jacob has what he wants as payment for that service from Laban, and he gets payment, and he gets payment that he doesn't expect. (laughs) Listen for God's word to us this day. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful and lovely. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah, and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. 
Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to wife. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We sing together now our song of worship, God of the Fertile Feet. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we lift our praises to you as we worship you in prayer and song. You are the king of the universe, our redeemer, the great I am, and we are your people. We humbly bow before you and thank you for your love and mercy, for your forgiveness of our thoughtless sin, for your loving grace that is new every day. Help us through your Holy Spirit. Turn away from the temptations of this world and come to you with open hearts and minds. Minds that know your word and seek your will for us. Hearts that beat with inner joy that comes from your spirit living in us as we give ourselves over to you as your servants. We know we are not worthy of your love and concern. We need you with us continually to strengthen and guide us in our weakness. We need your grace that we cannot earn or boast about. So we ask that your Holy Spirit to indwell and guide us to live as you lived, ever in tune with the Father. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, Father, for those here at Shiloh and with connections to Shiloh. We thank you that Linda Dixon is progressing well and is receiving physical therapy at Linda Angel's home after her knee surgery. We continue our prayers for Kiara as her scans show new cancers and she is now in palliative care. She is only 16 years old but has struggled so long at St. Jude's to be well. We pray for her family as they continue to support, support her we pray for Barbara and Elaine, for Johnny and his family, Billy and Jim, and for Sammy and Ellen. We pray for Marguerite and Jennifer, and all those we name out loud are in our hearts.
Keep them in your care. We pray for our church, our pastor, our session, and for each other, for our families and our neighbors and our friends. We pray for our leaders to hear your word and seek peace for those at war. We pray for those who have lost loved ones in violence and war. We pray for the hungry and the homeless, and we pray that we will we send will be what we send will be multiplied to meet the need. Lord, in your mercy. Let us sow your seeds on fertile ground and be a blessing to those we meet. Remind us that we cannot judge others, that judgment is yours. Help us to be new creations and be obedient to your will, to live in your truth and light for others to see. Help us teach your word in our churches, communities, and the world. Help us to stand against injustice and idolatry, prejudice, and bigotry. Let no man enslave another and let no one suffer hunger and thirst that we can reach. Help us uphold each other, pray for each other, help each other, and love each other as Jesus loved us. Help us to live knowing that we are called according to your design and purpose to follow Jesus in all things. We ask it all in the name, above all names, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's sing the hymn of preparation, number 502, Be Thou My Vision. question is, what is my favorite traditional hymn of the church? That would be the answer. <laughs> be thou my vision. <laughs> Let us listen now to the words of Jesus as found in the gospel according to Matthew. 
We're reading from the uh, new revised, or excuse me, the revised standard version this morning because of a, what I think is a little more literal translation of a, of a verse here. And let us listen for God's word to us this day. Another parable Jesus put before them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire. There they will weep and gnash their teeth. Have you understood all this? And they said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is old, or excuse me, what is new and what is old. This too, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you and may they be useful in the growing of the seed of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, stories about hidden treasure are a staple of adventure movies, children's books, and mystery stories from Treasure Island and various books featuring the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew to the Goonies, National Treasure, and the Indiana Jones films. Characters come across a map where X marks the spot where they can find something valuable. And then they are off on a treasure hunt. And there is real treasure out there too if you are willing to search for it. For example, in 1945, just before the end of the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands during World War II, Some German soldiers had taken some gold, jewels, and expensive watches from a Dutch bank. And they buried the loot in four ammunition boxes in the woods near a little country village. As they dug the hole, one of their fellow soldiers was lying injured and unnoticed in the bushes. He memorized the location, and later he drew a detailed map that showed where the treasure was buried by the poplar trees and how deep it was buried, about 1.7 to 2.3 feet. He was exact. The map ended up in the Dutch National Archives, and earlier this year, It was declassified and made public for the first time in over 75 years. So lately, many people have traveled to the little town of Omeron, 
population 750 or so, to look for a real-life Nazi treasure. Some have shovels, some have metal detectors. One even brought his divining rod. All of them hoped to discover something of great value. Well, I don't think most of us will drop everything and catch the first flight to the Netherlands to search for buried gold and jewels. You can find the map online if you want to. But according to Jesus, there is an even greater treasure available to us. In these parables from Matthew, Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven, the reign of God, the very presence and power of God to a buried treasure. This treasure is worth everything we have, says Jesus. Nothing comes close to being as valuable as the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is so precious and priceless that it calls for us to commit our whole selves to it. But how do you go about hunting for treasure that is hidden? Where do we seek the kingdom? Are we given any kind of map to point the way? Well, what we are given is more parables. The kingdom is like a bit of yeast that is hidden within 50 pounds of flour. The yeast is right there within the flour. The yeast is right there within the flour, working to transform the flour into dough and then into delicious, nourishing bread. So perhaps Jesus is suggesting that the kingdom of heaven is already here within the world. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, as we did just a few moments ago, and ask that the kingdom come on earth as in heaven, maybe we are not asking for some far away kingdom to come down and become present here and now. Maybe we are asking for the continued growth of the kingdom of heaven that is already present. There's an old fable from India that tells of a rich man traveling far from his home and he meets up with a poor man who notices that the rich man has a large money bag bulging around his waist. Well, the temptation is too much and the poor man decides to join the rich man on his travels so he can steal his treasure. Each night followed the same pattern. They would stop at a roadside inn where the poor man would lie down and pretend to go to sleep. The rich man would leave the room to wash up and the poor man would rummage through his things in search of that money bag. Each morning the poor man would do the same. When the rich man left for breakfast, he would begin digging through his things for the treasure. Morning or night, the thief never found the treasure. The thief would hear the rich man coming back into the room and he would quickly run over and lie down again. He was certain that he would find it next time. The next time never came. And finally, when they reached their destination, the poor man's curiosity got the best of him. He confessed that he'd been trying to steal the rich man's money. And he asked where the treasure was hidden. Had he guessed what the poor man was up to? Yes, of course, said the rich man. I knew that on the first night we were together. So every night while you went to get cleaned up for bed... I snuck around into the room and put my treasure in your pillow. Then every morning after you had rummaged through my things, I took it back. Perhaps the parable of the yeast reminds us that the kingdom of heaven is among us. As close to us as the pillow where we lay our head. The kingdom is at work within the world. God is present here. 
God's power is here among us seeking to transform us and to transform the world. We do not need to hunt for the kingdom or to hunt for God. Perhaps we need only open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to the kingdom that is already growing in our midst. The kingdom grows quietly and silently like yeast. And the kingdom also grows like a mustard seed. Mustard seeds were known for their small size. From one single tiny seed, small or smaller than the head of a pin, a large mustard bush could grow up to be eight or ten feet high. The thing is, however, that mustard bushes do not appear overnight. They don't shoot up from the ground in a sudden burst of growth. I'm told that it takes anywhere from 8 to 10 days for a mustard seed to poke up from the soil. Until then, it's hidden. It remains buried. And there is a fair amount of patience required if you want to see a mustard seed grow into a tree. Mustard seeds grow slowly and steadily. And so it seems does the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven works at its own pace. And we may see that as slowness. In fact, it may not appear to be moving at all. The Japanese Christian Kosuke Koyama once wrote a book entitled Three Mile an Hour God. And in that book, Koyama explains how the kingdom moves at its own pace. God walks slowly he says, because he is love. If he is not love, he would have gone much faster. Love has its own speed. It is an inner speed. It is a spiritual speed. It is a different speed. It is a different speed from the technological speed to which we are accustomed. It goes on in the depth of our life whether we notice or not, whether we are currently hit by storm or not, at three miles an hour. It is the speed we walk, and therefore it is the speed the love of God walks. The kingdom of heaven is not in a rush. God is in no hurry. The Lord is patient. For God does not want the kingdom to leave us behind. He slows down enough to walk beside us. He slows down enough to grow within us. And so the kingdom can seem hidden like a treasure in a field, or like yeast in a bunch of flour, or like a mustard seed buried in the ground. Scott Hoisey, who teaches at Calvin Theological Seminary in Michigan, may offer the best description of the kingdom of heaven when he writes this. And so as bearers of God's kingdom, we keep plugging away at activities which may look silly or meaningless to the world, but which we believe contain the very seed of a new creation. We keep coming to church and singing our old hymns, reciting our old formulas and creeds. All of us who preach keep cracking open an ancient book called the Bible, looking to find within it truths that are anything but ancient. We keep gathering at sick beds and death beds and whisper our prayers for the spirit of the resurrection to be with us in life and in death. We keep drizzling water onto squirming infants and popping cubes of white bread into our mouths in the earnest faith that through the Spirit, baptism and communion don't just mean something, they mean everything. And we keep working for Jesus in this mixed up, backward world of ours. We quiet carry out our jobs and raise our kids and tend our marriages in the belief that God has designs for all those things, and it's our job to follow them. We keep pointing people to an old rugged cross. 
having the boldness to suggest that the man who died on that cross is now the Lord of the galaxies. If we seek the treasure, the hidden treasure of the kingdom, if we seek God, the map tells us to be patient and keep searching. The kingdom grows slowly and steadily like a mustard seed. And like a mustard seed, as the kingdom grows, it draws the birds of the air. Now, birds of the air or birds of heaven was frequently used as a metaphor for Gentiles. So it could be that Jesus is telling us that the kingdom attracts outsiders. The kingdom is found where those outside the people of God come to take shelter. And if that hint was too subtle for his disciples or for us, Jesus doubles down on that image by telling us that the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net. And this is a particular kind of net. This was a drag net. No, not that kind of dragnet. Dun, 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 dun. No, nothing to do with Jack Webb. This was a net that fishermen dragged behind their boat. And it pulled together whatever was there to be pulled together. This net did not discriminate. It caught fish of any and every kind. There was no specific bait used to attract only certain kinds of fish. The net captured all sorts. If the kingdom is like a drag net, then could it be that the kingdom is found where we find all sorts of people? Wherever we see people of all different kinds brought together, is that like a big X? on the map showing just where the hidden treasure is. That's how it was with Jesus himself, wasn't it? In the world of ancient Judea and Galilee, Jesus attracted people of every kind. Jesus attracted tax collectors and sinners. In fact, that's what often got him in so much trouble with the authorities. He also attracted Greeks, Romans, Syrophoenicians, and Samaritans. And when his gospel was preached by his disciples, it attracted Macedonians, Ethiopians, and many others. He gathered lepers, the lame, and people suffering from various illnesses and diseases. He gathered women as well as men. He gathered people who were possessed by evil spirits. He drew to himself little children and wise magi from the east. He drew to himself fishermen and scholars, high-ranking officials and revolutionaries dedicated to overthrowing those officials. The kingdom grows silently, slowly, and steadily. But you can find the kingdom of heaven growing wherever all kinds of dividing lines are broken down and all kinds of people are brought together in community and in the name of God. Of Jesus Christ. If you are looking for the power and presence of God, that is where I think we can find it. The kingdom is at work among us. The kingdom is at work even now to transform all of creation by breaking down dividing walls and boundaries. The kingdom is at work even now to transform you and me. It is indeed a hidden treasure. But there are signs pointing to its whereabouts. Follow them and you will find what is without price. You will find what is most valuable in all the world. So happy hunting, my friends. Happy hunting. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please join me for a prayer of confession. Diligent Lord, who watches over us at all times, be with us all these days. We confess that we have allowed a host of worries and frustrations to crowd out your word for us. As you give us peace and your transforming love, also forgive all those times when we have been less than faithful disciples. Gently visit us again with your healing powers. Restore our hope and courage and joy for all the times ahead. We ask this in the name of the Master Healer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And for your assurance of pardon. Here is some wonderful news. While we were worrying and fretting, God has been at work in our lives, offering healing and peace. Receive these gifts in the name of, in the name and love of the Lord our God. Amen.
Let us pray. God of all blessings, Jesus inspired us through his teaching to see your kingdom as a place where small things can have a mighty impact. A tiny mustard seed planted or a bit of yeast mixed into the flour. So we ask you this day to bless the gifts we offer so that they may have a powerful impact when used according to your purposes. Bless us that we might see glimpses of your kingdom through our giving and grow in generosity in the process. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. If I may, um, <laughs> I had been uh, asked at the beginning of the service, uh, we have a, a, someone here who would like some prayer for some surgery and some problems she's having with her eyes. Jennifer? Yes. And if you, will, if you don't mind coming down, and we'll be glad to pray for you at the front here. Um, anyone that would like to come and, and, and pray together with Jennifer, you can do so from your... Uh, from your seat, or you can come and lay hands on if you wish. Lord, we, as your son Jesus healed the eyes of the blind, we pray that your healing touch would be upon Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Grant her healing within her eyes, and also more than anything, grant her vision of heart that she may see and know your love for her and your care for her, and the love that your church has for her as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, now, as we depart this time in this place of worship, (laughs) let us go and seek the kingdom of heaven, knowing that the love of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power and blessing of the Holy Spirit is among us, is with us, and follows us all our days. Amen.